Alright, okay, so hello dears! So, ayan, hello and welcome back to the third video on our lecture on the different parasites that you can see in our blood smears. And for this lecture, what we're going to discuss now are your blood sporozoans. Ayan, so I'm so scared. <laughs> Kaya medyo complicated mo gano'n siya. Um, for me lang no? But I, again, we've discussed this with Mom Bernas, so uh, that comforts me in a way. Okay, um, I think you already know na good. But I'm doing. I'll try my best to explain it properly. Okay, ako mismo medyo maglisa pa ako sa buhay ng mga lives <laughs> ko. I'll do this. I'll do this. I'll I'll do my best. Okay. All right. So these are your blood spores once. Okay. Um, now um, these blood spores ones are under what we call your phylum apicomplexa. Okay. Your phylum apicomplexa is named as apicomplexa because it contains. The cells or the parasites contain what we call an apical complex, which it uses to, to invade the host cells. Okay, so here's an example of your apical complex. As you can see, this is the parasite. Okay, and this is your apical complex. Okay, so it's a structure in their um, in their body, all right, or in the parasite that the parasite uses for invasion. Okay, it's not necessarily for locomotion. Okay, because there was no apparent. Um, locomotion that was discovered okay it's basically apical complex is for invasion okay it's an obligate intracellular parasite meaning it needs to be within the cells okay obligate when you say obligate diba? intro to micro obligate it really needs no requirement talaga because if dilik siya masulod ah? <laughs> because if it's not within the cells intracellular then it will die Okay, obligate intracellular, it needs to be within the cells, okay, for it to live. But as similar with your viruses, your viruses are obligate intracellular parasites actually because they reside on the host, they need the host to survive, okay. So, obligate intracellular particles are your viruses because they cannot live without a living cell, they cannot live if they are not within your living cells, okay. All right, again, so. Going back to your sporozoans, again, there are no apparent means of locomotion. And the life cycle includes a sexual reproduction, which occurs, of course, of course, of course, in your arthropod vector or your definitive host, which is termed as your sporogony, and your asexual, asexual reproduction, which occurs, of course, in your intermediate host, which is usually your humans, um, which is termed as schizo schizogony. Okay, so how do I remember sexual sporogony? How do I remember? Usually through sexual intercourse, as they produce mga spores, sporozoids. Okay, so they are. That's why the sexual reproduction is termed as sporogony. Okay, they produce spores during sex. Okay, or sexual intercourse. All right. Whereas for asexual, asexual, asexual. They produce mga schizons, okay? So schizogony, okay? Schizogony. Alright. Ayan. Now for the species that we look into are your Babesia species and Plasmodium species. For phylum apicomplexans, uh, included here are of course your coccidians, okay? Mga katong cyclospora, cryptosporidium, and etc. Alright? But we'll focus more on the blood sporozoans because they produce sporozoids, that's why sporozoans, okay? We'll focus on the blood sporozoans. You are Babesia and Plasmodium. Alright, All right. so we'll start first with your Babesia species. Uh, two species you have Babesia microti and uh, Babesia divergence. Alright, also known as your, um, or it causes your Texas cattle fever, your red water fever, and your tick fever or Nantucket fever because it was uh, the ticks are normally found in the Nantucket Island in the US. Okay, and uh, red water fever and Texas cattle fever. Alright, okay, the vector is known as your Ixodis, 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 SPP na mga ticks, mga deer ticks usually. Alright, ayan, this is a tick. Alright, and the definitive host is of course your vector which is your Ixodis, SPP ticks. Intermediate host is your man or other mammals. And the rest of the hosts for Babesia divergence is your cattle and rabbits. Okay, alright. Mode of transmission is bite of the vector primarily. Uh, through the bite of the vector, but it can also be transmitted through blood transfusion. And although the life cycle of Babesia is similar to Plasmodium, it's different in that it does not have an exo-erythrocytic cycle. Later, we'll know what is that. So for Plasmo uh, for Babesia, it only involves the RBCs, okay? They like the RBCs, they replicate, multiply within RBCs, okay? The diagnostic 
uh, tetrads or diagnostic methods talaga is your tetrads in the shape of your Maltese cross. The merozoites, meaning uh, uh, the stages no, of your Babisha merozoites, they are in the shape of your Maltese cross. Ayan. Press the buzzer, Maltese cross. Plus a Maltese cross formation within RBCs, that is your Babisha STP. Nako, press the buzzer na talaga. Maltese cross. This is an example of your Maltese cross, di ba? Same appearance of the merozoites within the RBCs. Okay. Now, why is it called red water fever? Your Babisha species, di ba, they reside within your RBCs. Okay, tama. <laughs> Tapos, of course, um, with after they reside within your RBCs, they cause rupture, lysis of your RBCs. Now, because of this lysis, no hemoglobin is uh, released in the system. And once hemoglobin is released in the system, it's now filtered by the kidneys. It now appears in your urine and now results to hemoglobinuria. Hemoglobinuria or hemoglobin in your urine Okay, which causes a red color urine. Diba? That's why it's known as your red water fever. Ayan, red water uh, fever. Okay. Alright. Okay, um, Alright, red water fever. Because again, of intense hemolysis, diba? Lysis of RBCs, hemoglobin is released in the system. Okay. And then filtered in the kidneys, released in the urine. Which gives the urine a characteristic appearance of red colored urine. That's why red water fever. Okay. And between Babisha microti and Babisha divergence, Babisha divergence is more fatal in terms of its infections. Okay. All right. And aside from that, the recall, what is the vector again? What is the vector of your Babisha? It's your Ixodes ticks. Now, aside from Babisha, these Ixodes ticks also harbor bacteria. Okay. <laughs> now, there is a bacteria, bacteria actually, marami sila, that can be transmitted through ticks. And a very good example of that is the positive agent of your Lyme disease. Nako, na mention na yata to ni Ma'am Teddy or wala pa. The positive agent of your Lyme disease, which is Borrelia. Ayan. Borrelia burgdorferi. Burgdorferi. Borrelia burgdorferi. The positive agent of your Lyme disease. This is an example of a spirochete. So when you say spirochete, this is a spiral bacteria. Ayan, spiral organism. Similar to your Treponema pallidum. One, a bacteria. And Leptospira. Of course, Treponema pallidum, positive or agent of your syphilis. And Leptospira, positive agent of your Leptospirosis. So, silang tulo, B, L, T, <laughs> are your spiral kids. Spiral bacteria. Yahang apira, it's spiral. Ayan, spiral bacteria. Sino yan sila? Spiral kids, who are they? B, L, T. Ayan. <laughs> Atong mnemonic, B, L, T, Borrelia, Leptospira, Treponema. Okay? Alright. Diba nag bakte? Wow, na mix ng bakte. Yes. Because again, aside from Babisha, using these sticks, it can also transmit Borrelia burgdorferi, which is the positive agent of your Lyme disease. Diba? Lyme disease, you have a characteristic bull's eye rash. So, sa pinakan, okay, or where the tick bite you or have bitten you, it causes a bull's eye rash. Like this, this is the skin, this is a reddish, and then I outer. Outer na parang clearing. Okay, that's the bull's eye rash. Characteristic of Lyme disease. Who is a positive agent? Borrelia burgdorferi. Which also can be transmitted by your Ixodes ticks. Okay, so aside from Babisha, what other bacteria or other disease can the ticks cause? Lyme disease. Okay. Dagan pang other diseases ha? I just emphasized on Lyme disease. Okay? Alright. And what are examples of our spirochetes? What is the mnemonic? BLT or your B <laughs> actually I have a funny experience with that when I last when I first uh, it was my first time teaching and then the third years now uh, they were second years back then when I handled a class in intro to micro kay si Ma'am Gemma pa to and then kapas, uh, nagpasab siya na ako alright <laughs> for a few topics kaya na siya natuon uh, so this was my topic I was talking about spiral kids and then I shared to them uh, my mnemonic, which is BLT, Borrelia, Leptospira, and 
Chaconet. So, di ba, how I lecture if face-to-face, I always go back to the question like, what are the spider kids? What is our mnemonic? And then, sub one student, I <laughs> did you know what I mean? siya, B lang. Yeah. <laughs> so, yagi, <yeah>, say. <laughs> Ang BLT talaga. Like, she um, put the vowels. <laughs> B, yes, ganun. So, na shocked ako. So, ayun. So, that's why. Very memorable. So, I hope you remember the mnemonics for your spider kids, BLT. Borelia, Leptospira, and Traponema. You'll have that in your third year bacteriology. So, now, very easy na lang. Okay? Please do not forget. Okay? You'll use that in your third year. And even fourth year. And even as, until you work as medtechs. Okay? Alright. And you proceed to medicine ba? Very important na. Easy na lang mga mnemonics. Okay? Alright. So, that's for Babisha. Daming chika for Babisha. Okay. Alright. Now, we go on to the life cycle. Of babisha. Usually good, uh, the babisha infects what we call your mouse, okay? Uh, generally, it infects the mouse. But the humans can also uh, be infected, okay? When the tick bites your humans, diba? Your exodus species, the ticks. <laughs> okay, alright. Now, when the tick bites the humans, again, uh, merozoids, tetrad shape, rus- uh, rosette, or Maltese cross, yes, Maltese cross. Ah, sorry, not the reset pala. Maltese cross, sorry. Okay. And it can be transmitted again via blood transfusion. Alright. And uh, again, uh, through the bite of a tick. Okay. And usually the main, main talaga, the main infected organism by the babesia is your mouse and other mammals. Okay. So in the mouse, again, same here. Trophozoic, metazoic, gametes. Okay. And the tick uh, will then ingest the gametes. And then the gametes will then become... Uh, an ookinite or a motile zygote, okay, a motile um, fertilized uh, egg or zygote, and then the ookinite uh, undergoes sporogony, which then releases your sporozoites, okay. So the sporozoites are now introduced into the host, okay. So that's the infective stage of your babesia, your sporozoites. Na mention ba Okay, so the infective stage are your sporozoids, okay? Sporozoids, which is then uh, introduced to the host, could be the mammals, mouse by usually, or humans, in the case of human infection, babesiosis, all right? So the infective stage are your sporozoids. That's why they are called sporozoans, because they produce your sporozoids, okay? So these are para mga motil na patulis siya na pagunar, and then they move, okay? All right, <laughs> sporozoids, all right. So that's for babesiosis, all right? Now we go now to the main, the start of Pasco ng lecture and the most um, important parasitic disease, uh, the parasitic disease that claims lives <laughs> every year and the most deadly good na parasitic disease and that is your malaria. All right, very common in the Philippines, endemic in the Philippines, so it's important that we talk about. So we need to emphasize this. All right, malaria literally translates to bad air. Malaria, because in the ancient times, this disease. All right. This disease was already noted or recorded even in the ancient times, mga Egyptian times, no? A lot of the Egyptian people or mga pharaohs, mga leaders nila, they died because of malaria. So, it was discovered mga in the future na that most of the pharaohs there died of malaria and even other civilizations before, malaria has already been recorded. So, it's already been with humans for many years now, since time immemorial, okay? All right, so, and during the mga 1800s, yata, or 1700s, they thought that malaria was caused by um, uh, bad, foul-smelling odor, no? From the soil na, na transmit to the air, okay? So, they thought that malaria was due to a uh, foul-smelling odor or some, from the land that was not transmitted to air. That's why it's translated to bad air, ang malaria. All right, that's the parang history niya. All right, but malaria has been present in the earth, has been with around humans for since time immemorial. Marami na. It's been a long time na talaga that malaria is here. Okay, all right. Now it remains to be again the leading parasitic disease worldwide, and it's the most important parasitic disease. Yes, uh, it's an acute febrile illness, so fever, febrile illness. Not in a, in a non-immune individual, meaning wala pa siya experience of malaria, symptoms usually appear 10 to 15 days after the bite of the mosquitoes. And the first symptoms usually are non-specific, so you cannot tell it's malaria. Fever, headache, chill, so pwede pa ka think that it's dengue. All right? But in the longer, uh, longer run, it can cause mga hemolysis, uh, jaundice even, no? or mga 
a hepatomegaly, like mag large in the liver, okay, in the long run, if it's not um, addressed, and eventually leads to death, okay. Alright, ayan. Now, malaria is endemic in 90 countries, o di ba marami? And most of the cases, or most of the deaths, fatalities occur in Africa, ayan. Because again, it's endemic there. You have a lot of vectors there in Africa, okay. Alright, and in 2019, estimated of about 229 million cases of malaria, and the death is about 409,000. Alright, children are most vulnerable under the age of 5 years old, and they accounted for 67% of the deaths in 2019 worldwide. And in the Philippines, as of 2018, I tried to look for mga data, but the recent is 2018, uh, there are about 2,976 cases, and mostly uh, came from Palawan region. Yes, malaria is endemic in Palawan because again, the vectors, Anopheles mosquitoes, they lay their eggs in rivers. Ayan, in free, uh, free flowing or mga fast flowing ng mga rivers. And Palawan is known for that. They have a lot of rivers, uh, di ba? Underground river pa ninyo, di ba? So very, very endemic. That's why it's endemic in Palawan. Okay. All right. The malaria. All right. And the drug of choice is your chloroquine, atagrine, and mepacrine, uh, which are considered as your anti-malarial drugs, and they cause yellow urine, diba? So, um, early in the pandemic, in COVID-19 last year, there, there have been uh, discussions, there have been trials, there have been tests or discoveries that hydroxychloroquine, ayan, or chloroquine, can be a drug against COVID. But then later on, it was discovered that it's not really effective, so it was discontinued, diba? So, hydroxychloroquine, yes, that that was discussed in COVID-19 na pandemic earlier, that was originally for malaria. So, that's the drug for malaria, okay? It's an anti-malarial drug, okay? Alright, so, but because of this, um, uh, this uh, drugs, no? Uh, malaria is now, uh, is, is the control. It cannot, can now be controlled because of these drugs, okay? Now, what you have to look after lang is resistance of the malarial species to the drugs. Okay? So, very important talaga. That's why if you go to Africa, mga Africa regions, or mga places endemic with malaria, you take a prophylaxis, di ba? So, prophylaxis, again, when you say prophylaxis, you already take para a drug against it so that you already have an initial protection against this uh, disease. Parang ganun. So, that's prophylaxis. So, either you take chloroquine ba, or I, I'm not sure kung it's a prophylaxis sa imuha malaria. But yes, ano na siya. Okay. And we also have a vaccine for mal malaria. It's known as Moscerix. Lumalabas sa boards. I think nigawa sa boards. What is the vaccine for malaria? It's Moscerix. I'm not sure lang if it's um, like out in the market and like really used by the uh, people. But I think it's still under modifications pa siguro. But the name of the vaccine is Moscerix. Please take note. Lumalabas sa boards. Lumabas sa boards. What is the vaccine for malaria? Okay? Moscerix. Alright, okay, ayan. so that's for the introduction to malaria. Now we go now to the main causative agent, star ng Pasko, siya talaga ang uh, center of attraction, <laughs> attention pala, is the plasmodium uh, species. This is the causative agent of malaria, and we have four important species that infect man, and that is your plasmodium falciparo, plasmodium vivax, plasmodium malariae, and plasmodium ovale. There is a fifth species, uh, but uh, it's not really common pa to infect man, and that is Plasmodium nolesi, okay, later, nolesi. Alright, but the main species you are known to infect man are Plasmodium, Malariae, Falciparum, Ovale, and Vivax. Okay, alright. Now, P. Falciparum is considered to be, again, the most common in the Philippines and is the most deadly, or the deadliest also. <laughs> so, kung isa pa pinaka-deadliest, siya pa dyan na nasa Philippines, o, di ba? Bong ng bongka, yes. Combo-combo na to. <laughs> okay. And uh, according to CDC in 2020, it's the predominant species in the world. And Plasmodium vivax is considered to be the most widely distributed malarial organism. That's according to Zybig. Alright? So, uh, for the longest time, I have... Uh, for the longest time, I've been studying, no? Uh, I've, I've noted already good for the longest time that Plasmodium vivax is the most common in the world. And Plasmodium falciparum is the most common in the Philippines. But according to CDC, the predominant species in the world is, is Plasmodium falciparum. But for Zybig, it's still Plasmodium vivax. So how do we differentiate? Depending on the phrasing of the question. So especially in the board exam, board exam questions are word for word usually uh, and very book based. So they usually um, write it exactly word for word. So if the question is most widely distributed uh, malarial organism, then you answer 
uh, Plasmodium vivax. But if the question is the predominant species in the world, then you go for Plasmodium falciparum. So it goes or it differs now in how the question was phrased. So that's how we answer some of our examples. <laughs> so mga sharing tips na, mga tips in the review centers. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, uh, mixed infection. If there's a mixed infection, it's usually caused by the two species, falciparum and vivax. Okay. The vector is your Anophilus minimus variant Claviroxtris, which is your definitive host. Again, uh, found in the Philippines. Yes, this is your Anophilus. Yes. A sexual cycle is what we call your schizogony, which happens in the man, which happens to us. Okay, so infective stage uh, to mosquitoes, meaning coming from us, is now your uh, sporozoids. Sure. Atama, meaning what we get there, infective stage 2 man, meaning what we get from mosquitoes are the sporozoids. Tama. Infective stage 2 man is your sporozoids. Tama. We, meaning what, what stage we get from your mosquitoes. Okay. Alright, okay, so for the sexual cycle, we'll now go <laughs> to the life cycle of malaria, which is again very, very complicated, but sige na, Alright, so we'll go now to the sexual cycle or the schizogony, which again happens in man. Okay, so the stage that we get or the infective stage to man of malaria is the sporozoids. Alright, so the first thing that happens is, of course, sporozoids are injected into the humans by your female Anopheles mosquitoes. Alright, now these sporozoids, once inside the bloodstream, they are first carried into your liver parenchymal cells. Okay, so they first infect the liver cells. And they, they become their, your cryptozoids, okay? So the, the cryptozoids then develop into the metazoids, all right? And these metazoids now, in the liver cells, once they are mature enough, they then rupture the liver cells and then now infect uh, the RBCs, all right? Completing the exoerythrocytic stage. So this is what we call the exoerythrocytic uh, cycle, okay? Exoerythrocytic Cycle. So meaning exo, delete ng K-pop band. <laughs> exo meaning outside. So it's the cycle that happens outside of the RBCs. So in this case, in the liver cells. All right. Okay. So the merozoids, once mature, they rupture the liver cells and goes out. Okay. They go out. All right. And they now infect age-specific mga RBCs depending on the species of Plasmodium, right? Diba? So the merozoids enter circulating RBCs which now they become your ring trophozoites or mga developing or immature, early, early trophozoites, okay? They, then they further mature to what we call your schizons, okay? Now, these schizon contains, again, the metazoites, <laughs> metazoites, okay? And these metazoites are, are released on cell rupture. Now, there are three cases that will happen, that may happen. These metazoites that have been ruptured or that have been released from the rupture of RBCs can infect other RBCs, okay? Another scenario that can happen is they then mature into your gametocytes, okay? The gametocytes are now then the infective stage of your of the malaria to the mosquitoes, alright? And the third scenario is that these metazoites are then uh, destroyed by the immune system, alright? Okay, so yes, muna siya merozoids. And of course, after a number of erythrocytic cycles, some of the metazoites again become gametocytes. Microgametocyte ang male, macrogametocyte ang female. Ayan, alright. So, microgametocyte, so mas gamay ang male kaysa sa female. So, ang male, a female juna stronger. Yes, woman empowerment na dirig napita sa malaria. Okay. So, ang macrogametocyte ang female, microgametocyte ang male. Alright, so that's what happens inside the body of humans. Okay? Alright. Exoerythrocytic cycle. Now, in this stage, palagdaan, there are some species of plasmodium that will have a dormant stage, okay? A dormant stage within the liver known as your hypnozoids, okay? Hypnozoids. So when they say yourself, hypno, diba? Hypnotized or sleeping. Hypnozoids, dormant stage of your plasmodium species residing in the liver, meaning instead of rupturing the liver, nag stay pa siya sa liver for a long time. Nagpa-dormant lang siya. And these species of plasmodium that exhibit this are, are your plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale. Si VO. Okay? P vivax and P ovale. As you can see later on, sila mga morphological characteristics or whatever. Ang vivax o ovale yung magsigig po yun. <laughs> it's the two of them that goes together most of the time. Alright? Okay. And similar here, it's the two species of plasmodium that have this stage, the hypnozoids, meaning they reside in the liver dormantly. So in a way, 
um, the patient may be may not be experience any symptoms from of malaria. But uh, the downside here is that they are dormant stages, so meaning they can cause relapses. Okay, relapses or mga recrudescence, meaning they thought that they're already okay, all right, from the plasmodium virus infection, but because of the hypnozoids, they can go back to the infection or they can experience the same symptoms or the same infection, infection again because of these hypnozoids, all right? Okay, so it's only two species or only documented in two species, plasmodium virus and plasmodium ovale. All right, so that's the schizogony that happens in man. All right. Now we go on to the sexual reproduction or the sporogony, which happens in your female Anopheles mosquitoes. So infective stage now, two mosquitoes are your gametocytes. Meaning, what stages of the malarial parasite does the mosquito get? Gametocytes. But for humans, what is the infective stage to humans? Sporozoids. Meaning, these are the stages of malarial parasite that we get from mosquitoes, okay? But the stages of malarial parasite that the mosquitoes get from humans are your gametocytes, okay? And gets luck. So infective stage to man, sporozoids. Infective stage to mosquitoes, gametocytes, all right? Okay, wala ko nang iso na. Okay, wala ko na strong, all right, okay. So again, diba, let's say a mosquito uh, bite or bit a patient with malaria. So the mosquito now gets into man, the gametocytes. So both the microgametocyte and macrogametocyte. Kinsa gani ang male or female? Micro male. Macro women empowerment ang female. Okay, all right. So micro and macrogametocytes are ingested by your female Anopheles mosquitoes and uh, from from the blood in a blood meal from a man infected with malaria. And these microgametocyte and macrogametocyte again mates, mates, <laughs> they have sex or they mate and they produce what they call your gametes, okay? And the gametes unite to form what we call your zygote, which is a motil ookinete, okay? So it's a fertilized egg na motil. So it has a flagella, parang ganun. Okay, so uh, it's termed as a motil ookinete. Now this motil ookinete, um, insists in the gut wall of the mosquitoes and they produce now your oocysts. These oocysts are then released from the sporozoids. Ah, joke, sorry, sorry. These oocysts release um, sporozoids once they mature enough from sporozoids. And these sporozoids now will now travel to the salivary gland of your mosquito, which then uh, results to the same infection again. And the life cycle goes on. All right? So from the oocyst, sporozoids are released. Sporozoids are then transferred or transmitted or yeah, transferred to your salivary glands of the mosquitoes and which is now ready to infect another person. Right, yeah. So the cycle goes on. All right? Okay. Now for symptoms and pathology, uh, first, of course, recurrent fever, chills, and sweating. And there's a synchronized structure of red cells. And this is what we call your paroxysms. Okay? So meaning... Every hour, every gunner, or every pilaka hours, each species of plasmodium, you experience or the patient experiences these symptoms. Alright? And there is synchronized rupture of cells. Because again, of the merozoids, diba? That are already mature and they go out of the RBCs already. Okay. So every 36 hours, your malignant tertian malaria, of course, plasmodium falciparum. Every 48 hours, benign tertian malaria, plasmodium virus and ovale, as you can see, sila na naman. <laughs> they come together. And lastly, every 72 hours, your quartan malaria, your plasmodium malaria. That's why, as you can see, ang um, plasmodium falciparum ang deadly, yes. Because every 36 hours, meaning fast ang turnover, fast ang, pag, uh, ang one episode to another, fast ang one paroxysm to another. It's only every 36 hours, di ba? Um, whereas the rest, every two days pa, every three days, di ba? So, that's why um, deadly, yes, ang plasmodium falciparum. All right. Okay, and there's anemia, red cell destruction, because again, hemolysis of RBCs, bursting of RBCs, and then you also have, which leads to the enlargement of your spleen and joint pain. Your spleen, my good, the main function of your spleen is the sequestration or the destruction or the digestion of mga old RBCs or damaged RBCs. Now, because of intense or high number of destroyed RBCs, so of course, your spleen will increase in size to accompany the increasing number of destroyed or hemolyzed RBCs, all right? So there is um, splenomegaly, splenomegaly, so increase in the uh, shape, uh, size of your spleen 
due to increased uh, number of RBCs that, that are destroyed. All right. Okay. And of course, uh, PFAL is a viral infection. Again, most likely fatal. Because it causes cerebral malaria. Because your plasmodium um, malaria, plasmodium falciparum malaria parasites, what they exhibit, what we call cytoadherence. So meaning, they adhere on the surface of your blood vessels. All right. So it can lead to uh, blockage in the brain vessels and whatever, which causes cerebral malaria, which can cause death. Ayan. All right. All right. And aside from that, it also causes your black water fever. Ayan, it's mga fever jan. Okay, because of intense intravascular hemolysis. Intravascular hemolysis meaning the RBCs within the blood vessels, intravascular within the blood vessels, are lysing. They, they continuously lyse. And increased amounts of hemoglobin, it can now turn into color black. So, it's black water fever. Hemoglobinuria pa rin siya. But because of intense number of RBCs, no, the the... Um, the hemoglobin will now turn into black. Pwede na siya turn into black because of too much hemoglobin. And also, it's toxic to the kidneys. Your kidneys could also be affected. But your kidneys can also die, alright? Or be uh, poisoned or toxic mga ng hemoglobin to your kidneys. Alright? So, it can also lead to kidney injury. Alright? Okay. Ayan. So, that's for PFAS. That's why it's considered to be the most fatal. Alright. Now, again, here's the um, life cycle. As we've mentioned, Kaya ko ba bang i-cheat ka? <laughs> Wala na akong energy. Tara. Okay. Kaya pa. Laban lang. Alright. So, again, starting with the mosquitoes. Sporozoids. Diba? Infective stage to man. The sporozoids then travel to your liver cell. Which, be they become cryptozoids. And then once they mature, they become merozoids. Alright? The merozoids then uh, are rupture. Diba? Uh, schizone is the total structure. Within the schizone is the merozoids. Ayan. So, schizone, and then inside of the schizone is the merozoids. Okay? Alright. So, here, schizone on the butang. So, ruptured schizone contains the merozoids. The merozoids then infect your RBCs. Alright? And they become your immature trophozoid, which is your ring stage. And then they become immature trophozoid, and then merozoids within the schizone, and then rupture again in the RBCs, and then infect new RBCs. Or, the other path is the mature schizones become gametocytes, alright? And then the gametocytes are then ingested by another mosquito, alright? Uh, during a blood meal. And then the gametocytes inside the mosquito become again, uh, they mate and they release your gametes. And then the gametes unite to form a motel ookinete. And the ookinete insists within the gut wall of your mosquitoes and become an oocysts. And once the sporozoids inside the oocysts are mature enough, they are released into the system of the mosquitoes. And the sporozoids then travel into the salivary glands of your mosquitoes and then ready again to infect another person and the life life and the life cycle goes on. Ganerd. Alright. So again, exo-erythrocytic erythrocyte cycle, meaning outside of RBCs, happens in the liver. And again, what are the two species of plasmodium that have a dormant stage in the liver? Or your hypnozoids, your Plasmodium ovale and Plasmodium hypatis. Okay, so that's the life cycle of your malaria. Whew. And I hope you get it. And again, review na din siya. I know because again, you have already been, uh, you have already discussed this in the lecture. All right. Okay, so we'll now start. I hope you get it. I hope you get it. Okay. All right. Now we go now to um, the first species of Plasmodium, which is again the deadliest. So siya na akong una is your Plasmodium falciparum. So it's your malignant tertian malaria. So it has small ring forms. You have ap applique, applique. I forgot. I forgot to search the pronunciation. But it has an acute. It has a acute axis. I think it's applique, accolate forms, uh, marginal or double nuclear duct. So when you say applique or accolate forms, the parasites are at the edge of the RBCs. They're at the edge of glory. They're at the edge of your uh, RBCs. As you can see there. This one. Uh, yeah. So this one in the red. Uh, the, the parasites, these are the parasites, uh, the malarial parasites are at the edge, okay, at the edge of your RBCs, alright? Applique or accolate forms. Again, I'm not sure with the pronunciation, but I have to search it again. But I think it's applique, accolate, alright, alright. Multiple parasitation of red cells, so it could be, can lead to multiple ring infection, meaning it can parasitize a lot of RBCs at the same time. It has a characteristic uh, dots known as Maurer's dots, so these dots are parang mga condensed hemoglobins, okay? Condensed hemoglobin in the RBCs, alright? And mga characteristic appearance in nila. And for falciparum, that's Bauer's dots. Later, I will share a mnemonic again for that, 
for the different dots, <laughs> for the different dots <laughs> in it and each plasmodium species. So don't worry. All right, okay. It invades all stages of RBC cyan. For falciparum, it does not discriminate char. It does not choose any RBC. Ganaran siya kasi unsa ng RBCs. So that's how I remember. Falciparum is a F boy. <laughs> so F boy siya. Okay. <laughs> Nasa pangalan na falciparum. Boy, okay, F boy siya because it invades. Wala siya choose. It doesn't choose any RBC. Any RBC, mapayang man or old, may it be old or young RBCs, it will infect. Okay, that's why partly the reason then why it's very deadly because it can infect any type of RBC. All right, okay. Ayan. Now for the gametocytes, as I mentioned, as I've already mentioned, the shape of the gametocytes is crescent or banana shaped. Okay, all right. And black water fever again, most prominent feature because of intravascular hemolysis, it leads to black urine. Aside from that, cerebral malaria, why? Because it's the only plasmodium species that causes cytoadherence. When you say by the name itself, cytoadherence, it adheres on the cells of the blood vessels. So, mutapot siya, it will stick there and it can cause blockage in the blood vessels of the brain, cerebral malaria, or in the other blood vessels in the body. Alright? Okay, so sa mga black water fever, si Gary Paul, kisa tong black fever na, kisa tong black water, di ba? Para perfume, charot. And the red water, o, di ba? All parasites, fever, fever, fever. So kung black fever, who is this? Kala Azar, Leishmania, Donovani. Black water fever, na compress the buzzer, black water, intravascular hemolysis, black urine, too much, hemoglobin is released, P. falciparum, plasmodium falciparum, falciparum. And lastly, red water is, of course, Babesia species. Na compress the buzzer na talaga. The different colors of the para <laughs> in mga diseases of parasite. <laughs> okay. Alright, ayan. So malignant tertian. Malignant meaning again it's deadly, malignant. It can cause uh, uh, it can invade a lot no, of RBCs. And tertian is because I think every three days, 36 hours, they shall three days. Because that every uh pas pas no tertian, yeah have uh, paroxysms or the rupture of RBCs. Okay? Malignant tertian malaria. Alright, now we go into the different, uh, some of its ano lang, morphology. Again, this is the ring forms and this is the gametocyte. Very characteristic here. Defining characteristic of P. falciparum, the only plasmodium species that, have, that has the banana shape, crescent shaped gametocyte. That's why in your exams, if, you, if it's already dis described there as banana shaped, crescent shaped gametocyte, na press the buzzer na, wag na isep, that is. Plasmodium falciparum because it's only Plasmodium falciparum that has this appearance in its gametocyte. All right, and for the ring forms of P. falciparum, it's often described as a headphone, headphone configuration, right? As you can see, headphone, right? So, parang the nerd. Okay, headphone, headphone configuration. Ring forms of Plasmodium falciparum. All right. Okay, so that's for P. falciparum, malignant tertian malaria. All right. Next, we go on to Plasmodium vivax. Again, which is considered to be your benign tertian malaria, meaning because it's not that deadly. Okay, or it's not. It doesn't infect all of the RBCs. Right? So benign lang. All right. Very characteristic niya dears are its amoeboid form. Amoeboid form trophozoite in your red blood cells, and it has a uh, it has a characteristic Schachner's dots in your red blood cells. Again, the dots are mga condensed hemoglobin due to their um, uh, ingestion of the hemoglobin of your plasmodium species. Alright. It only infects your reticulocytes. So, gusto niya lang yung mga vata. Ayan. Vata. Gusto niya vata. Young RBCs. Ganaan siya? Kidney meals. <laughs> Ganaan siya? Atabs. Atabs. Okay. <laughs> Ayan. So these are your example of reticulocytes. So for reticulocyte counting, you'll know in your hematology, um, you need to stain it with a different stain. All right, and this is its appearance. Okay, I will not further discuss reticulocytes. Kaya matiyam na. Okay, you'll have that in your hema one hematology. Okay, all right. Infected RBCs. When they infect RBCs, they tend to be enlarged, and the gametocyte is round. Okay, so the round. Trophozoid, very characteristic again, characteristic of P. vivax, amoeboid trophozoid. And the stages seen in peripheral blood, all of its stages. Okay. And hypnozoids, as I mentioned, the resting stages, 
uh, that occurred in the liver. All right. Okay. And in the developing trophozoite, they may it may produce what we call a hemozoite, which is a brown pigment uh, brought about by their uh, byproducts in the digestion of hemoglobin. Okay, because your parasite feed on hemoglobin. Now their byproducts is uh, one of its byproducts is known as your hemozoite, which is a brown pigment. Okay, actually I think all of your Plasmodium species have this. All right. Okay, so here's an example of P. bivax, yeah? amoeboid trophozoid, as you can see, diba? amoeboid, it looks like an amoeba, alright? And this is your hemozoid, the brown pigment there, okay? Which is again a byproduct of the parasite feeding on the RBC's hemoglobin, okay? Alright, I answer my quote, my quote, my Alright, so don't, for, don't be confused, dear staff, for the stages of your malaria, diba? It starts first with the early trophozoids, which is your ring forms. Followed by your immature uh, schizons, I think developing trophozoites, uh, developing trophozoites. Then you have the immature schizons, and then the mature schizons, and then lastly your gametocytes, both micro and macro. I hope tama na. Alright, okay. So, muna siya yung mga stages. In the body. In the in the human's body. Okay? Alright. So, that's for Plasmodium vivax. Okay. Now, for the next, we have Plasmodium ovale. So, it's still benign tertian malaria. Uh, again, you have dots. Could be James dots or also known as your Schaffner's dots. It also invades young RBCs. Ayan. Gusto niya yung mga vata. So, how do I remember? Okay, so kinsa to mga ganahan? Vata? O Vata? <laughs> o Vata? O Vale and Vivax. Gusto nila ang mga kidney meals. Gusto nila ang mga Vata. O Vata. Okay, that's my name. O Vale and Vivax. Invades young RBCs. Infected RBCs are larger than and very characteristic serrated and fimbriated. We'll see a picture later. Ayan. So you can see fimbriated meaning na yung mga ikog-ikog ng RBCs. There is like a tail, alright? Or serrated. Para siyang may mga protrusions. There are protrusions in the side of the RBCs. Alright? Characteristic of plasmodium of Vane. Please take note. Alright. And uh, large pale red cells with Schaffner's dots again. And again, basta. Characteristic RBCs are serrated and fimbriated. Serrated or fimbriated. And again, exhibits your hypnozoids. Alright. Same with plasmodium vivax. As I mentioned, diba, they always come together. Ang vivax and ovale. They have hypnozoids. They can also have Schaffner's dots. And they like kidney meals. <laughs> they like young RBCs. They like atamsi. So, ovata. Okay. Alright. And again, for plasmodium ovale, very characteristic, defining characteristic, RBCs are serrated or fibrillated. As you can see, para siya may mga protrusions, para siya may mga tail. Alright? Okay. So we go now to the next Plasmodium species, and that is your Plasmodium malariae. Alright? Or your Quartan malaria. So it's the less um, deadly <laughs> sa upat. Okay? Quartan malaria, mas taas -taas. So uh, the time for the paroxysms is every 72 hours. So it's quite uh, longer. Okay? Alright, ayan. Uh, it has single, large, compact ring or band forms. It has Zyman's dots. Again, don't worry about some mga names later. I will have a mnemonic. I will share a mnemonic on you for you on that. Okay, alright. And it invades now this time. Ganahan siya. Old RBCs. Ayan, gusto niya mga cougar. Mga milf at dill. Charot. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. okay, so gusto niya mature RBCs. So, malaria. Diba gusto niya? Malaria. Gusto niya ang matanda. Okay, Sa pangalan niya. Malaria matanda. Alright? It likes old RBCs. Alright? Or mature RBCs. Malaria mature. Okay, alright. Infected RBCs are of normal size and it has a schizont. Diba? Within schizonts are the metazoids. The metazoids are arranged in rosette formation or also described as a fruit pie. Ayan. The trophozoid is also another characteristic band trophozoid. And the metazoid, as I mentioned, is rosette. Fruit pie or daisy head. So it looks like a flower, alright, or in, uh, in appearance, or in in its shape, or in its um, order. Okay, it looks like a flower, alright, metazoid, fruit pie. The gametocyte, again, similar with the rest, except for Plasmodium falciparum, it's ovoid, or round, alright. 
In the stages in the peripheral blood, your rings, trophozoites, and your schizoids. Ayan. So for the picture, this is your band, trophozoite, as you can see. RBC band. Diba? Band. Okay? Alright. And lastly, for merozoites, it looks like a uh, fruit pie or rosette. When you say rosette, they are formed like a flower. Ayan. So, uh, yahang appearance or their appearance is similar to a flower. Alright? Merozoites. So that's for Plasmodium malaria. Very, very defining characteristics for case studies. Band trophozoite, fruit pie, rosette formation of merozoites. Now, who press the buzzer? Alright? Okay, ayan. That's for Plasmodium malaria or your quartan malaria. And for the last species of Plasmodium, again, the fifth human species of Plasmodium, but again, uh, not common to cause infection, is your Plasmodium nolisi. Again, the fifth human malarial parasite, normally a parasite of your long-tailed macaw, which are mga monkeys, okay, monkeys. But humans working or living in a nearby forest fringe are at a great risk of infection. And that's why, that's how humans get the infection. But generally, Plasmodium nolisi, they infect your uh, long-tailed macaw, 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 the macaw, as a macaw. Okay, these are monkeys, all right? I think, tama ba? I think monkeys, yeah, if not mistaken, or birds. <laughs> oh my gosh, all right, yeah, basta. Okay, all right. Describe in humans in the Philippines and Southeast Asia, yes. Um, they are microscopically distinguishable from P. malariae, and differentiation is only achieved through PCR assay and molecular characterization. But for Plasmodium nolisi, it uh, mimics Plasmodium falciparum in the early stages and Plasmodium malariae in the later stages. So, uh, if early infection pa lang, bago pa lang, the stages that Plasmodium nolisi have is Plasmodium falciparum. But in the later stages, it now resembles Plasmodium malariae. Now, how do I remember F, falciparum, malariae, letter M? So, sino mas nauna? Which comes first? Falciparum. So, siya ang early stages, Plasmodium falciparum, letter F, uh, comes first, di ba? And malaria, letter M, siya ang second. Okay? Siya ang later stages, malaria. Alright? Okay, that's how I remember. Basta, plasmodium falciparum F comes first than M. So, siya ang early stages na i-mimic. Alright? Or early stages of plasmodium nolesi mimics plasmodium F falciparum. Siya ang And the later stages of plasmodium nolesi mimics, letter M, plasmodium malaria. Okay. Alright. So, we go down to the comparison by table. Ayan, so mga different characteristics. This is based on Belisario, okay? But each of its references, um, they have their own specific uh, mga description. So it varies. But generally, they have the same overall point of description. But for the words that they use, all right, it varies from one reference to another. But for this, this is from Belisario, all right? So we start first with the infected RBCs. For, for P. Vibax, it's larger than normal. For P. ovale, it's larger than normal also, but again, with a fringed or irregular edge, serrated or fibrillated RBCs, alright? Okay, for P. malaria and P. falciparum, normal, alright? Normal ang iyakang RBCs, but for P. falciparum, always take note that multiple infection, meaning multiple RBCs, maraming RBCs, ang pwede niyang ma-infect, okay? Alright, next, for small trophozoids or early rings, mga ring forms, for P. vibax, Heavy red dot, heavy red dot, and blue uh, cytoplasmic ring, parang ganun. So, letter, uh, color blue. Alright? So, it looks like a ring. Alright. Ang P. ovale, small, darker in color, and more solid than those of P. falciparum. Alright. For P. malaria, P. vivax, same shell with P. vivax, but uh, blue cytoplasmic circle, smaller, thicker, and heavier. For P. falciparum, it's same with P. vivax, but thread-like, um, it's much thinner ang um, kanyang cytoplasmic ring. Okay? Alright. That's for the different rings, early rings for the different species of plasmodium. Next, we go now to your growing trophozoite. Again, so for growing trophozoite, for P. vivax, amoeboid, as I mentioned, diba? Amoeboid, trophozoite, P. vivax. For P. ovale, larger, but similar to P. malariae. For P. malariae, again, band, please take note, band trophozoite across the cell. And for P. falciparum, remains in ring form but grows resembling small trophozoite of P. vivax. Usually the oldest asexual stage seen in the peripheral blood, a trophozoite, growing trophozoite. Now for the large trophozoite, for P. ovale and P. falciparum, seldomly uh, seen. And still the same P. vivax, amoeboid trophozoite. And there is a brown pigment, hebozoite. And for P. malaria, again, band 
trophozoite. Okay, please take note. Mga defining characteristics sa each plasmodium species. Next, we go down to schizont. Okay, uh, premature. So there is dividing of the chromatin. No, uh, for pink vibrax, chromatin divided. Yes, varying degrees of separation. All right. For P. ovale, uh, oval shaped, 25% uh, of the infected cells. Uh, the parasite in the center of an oval cell. All right. And there is a, it's less force than P. malariae. For P. malariae, the chromatin division is less. No, it's not evident. And more delayed clumping of pigment. Whereas for P. falciparum, it's not present. And then for mature schizont, the but within the schizont are the merozoites. So it, Again, each species have their own number. For P. vibrax, it's 12 to 24. For P. ovale, about 8, forming a central block. For P. malariae, again, 6 to 12, arranged in rosette or fruit pie. And whereas for P. falciparum, rarely present, but if it's present, it's about 8 to 24 merozoites. All right? Okay, <laughs> that's for the schizone. Again, within the schizones are the merozoites. Okay, all right. Now for the gametocytes, again, for P. vibrax, for P. ovale, P. malaria, they're all the same size, uh, they're all the same shape, round, okay? But a uh, difference than you, very specific for P. falciparum, very defining of P. falciparum, is the gametocyte, the shape of crescent or banana shaped, okay? All right, please take note. For stages in peripheral blood, for P. falciparum, it's not all of the stages are seen. Seldom, rather, ba? Makita na po ba? And for length of a sexual cycle, 48 hours or less, ang imumang P. falciparum. So, 36 hours. Okay? And again, for P. malaria, the longest, about 72 hours. Alright. Okay. Now, we're going to the different appearance, no? For the ring forms, as you can see, for P. vibrax, the but thicker, ang kaya cytoplasmic ring. For P. ovale, the but the RBC starts to be serrated, fibrillated na. For P. falciparum, looks like a headphone, di ba yan? Looks like a headphone configuration. And for P. nodes, di ba early stages, uh, it mimics P. falciparum. So, I cannot see the difference. Or the similarity pala. Pero yes. <laughs> Parang pare parehas naman. Okay. Alright. That's for the early ring forms. Next, we go now to the late ring forms. Still the same. Um, your bio valley consistent um, appearance. Serrated, fibrillated RBCs. Alright. Okay. Late ring forms. Next, we go now to the trophozoites. Diba? As you can see, banned trophozoites from malaria. And bio valley. Serrated, fibrillated, and you have RBCs. Alright? And diba, P. nolesi, diba? Same na siya with P. malaria. The later stages of plasmodium nolesi is similar now to your plasmodium malaria. Alright, okay. Now for the developing ski zones, as you can see, um, P. malaria, fruit pie. Okay? Alright? And P. falciparum, a holy, applique forms. Meaning at the edge of RBCs, diba? A holy, applique forms. Alright? Okay, that's for the developing schizones. And next, for the mature schizones, as you can see, the P. falciparum is starting to form the shape now of a banana, diba? But it's still not yet the gametocyte, alright? And P. malari, as you can see, rosette form, fruit pie. Again, rosette form, they are uh, arranged as like they're a flower, petals of a flower, rosette, okay? Alright, that's for the mature schizones. And lastly, for the microgametocytes, ayan, they're all the same size, circle, diba, or ovoid. And the difference ng yun, the difference ng yun, very specific, is for P. falciparum, which is banana shape or crescent shaped. Alright, and for visual purposes, talaga na mas claro yun, diba? Alright, uh, this is also seen in the last nato na PowerPoint, diba, na lecture handout. Alright, so again, ring forms, medyo baga ovale, alright, very thin and falciparum, looks like a headphone. Alright, for trophozoites, again, banned trophozoite from malaria and very serrated, fibrillated RBCs for P. ovale. Please take note. For schizones, again, uh, uh, mature schizones, malaria, as you can see, it looks like a fruit pie or rosette form. And for gametocytes, again, very characteristic of your P. falciparum, banana crescent shaped gametocytes. Alright, the rest are ovoid or spherical in form. And a P. ovale is always consistent with your serrated or fibrillated RBCs, right? Okay, now for identifying malaria, dears, it takes practice. It needs a lot of training. That's why even if you're still working, if even if you're already a med tech, you're working as a med tech already, you need, uh, before you can identify malaria, you need to uh, undergo training muna, okay? Like in RITM, there's a lot of training pa. You cannot like immediately say na, ah, okay, I already know. I myself, diba, as I've been 
lecturing here, what I'm focusing lang are the distinct characteristics, you know, distinct features of each plasmodium species, like the band trophozoic and the fruit pie merozoids of your malaria, your sedated, fibrillated RBCs of ovale, banana crescent shape of gametocytes, headphone uh, configuration of the ring forms of P. falciparum, diba? And, uh, what's the moment? P. vivax. Ah, a meboid trophozoid of P. vivax, diba? So, that's what I'm trying to, um, share lang because that's the defining characteristics but if you tell me to identify them based on rings lang or like uh, mga trophozoids which they look the same lang talaga then I will have a hard time because again it needs training okay so do not be pressured na you need to identify you need to know how they look like talaga only only lang yun the defining always focus uh, focus muna on the defining characteristics and features of each plasmodium species the band trophozoid the amoeboid trophozoid, the fruit pie merozoids, banana shaped crescent shaped gametocytes. Yes, kato sila. Kay mga press the buzzer na yan. Okay? Alright, so I'm not requiring you, pressuring you to remember or to really like master your identity or like how they look like under the microscope. Only the defining characteristics, only the defining features of each plasmodium species. Okay? Alright, alright, alright. So I'll now share again your the mnemonics before we end for the dots. Okay? Diba? So, we'll start first with Falciparum, uh, Maurers, and uh, wait sa Falciparum, the Maurers dots, then uh, Vivax is your Schaffners, uh, next is uh, Malaria, the Zemans, and lastly for uh, Ovalia, uh, the James dot. So James not only can have, but Ovali can also have shockers. So what's our mnemonic? Uh, Ferdinand Marcos, <laughs> Ferdinand Marcos, and Vilma Santos, diba? went to Manila Zoo to drink orange juice. <laughs> Again, F M V S M Z. O J So falsifying Maurer's dots Ferdinand Marcos Never again Okay Vivax Schaffners Vivax Vilma Santos diba? Vilma Santos Malari Zimats Manila Zoo And lastly of course Ovalde and James Orange Juice So Ferdinand Marcos and Vilma Santos Went to Manila Zoo To drink Orange Juice oh, diba? <laughs> Mga nonsense na Monday mornings But I hope it's effective And it's effective for me I still remember, remember it until now. So for Falsiparum, Ferdinand Marcos, Falsiparum, Maurers, Vilma Santos, Vivax, Schaffners, Malari, uh, Manila Zoo, Malari, Zymans, or Zimans, and lastly, Orange Juice, Ovale, James Dots. Okay, but again, Ovale can also have Schaffners Dots, alright? But, ato lang yung uh, J dili, para easy. Alright? Okay. Ayan. Or if you want Orange Juices, para James and Schaffners. Alright, okay, so that's the mnemonics for the dots, the mga condensed hemoglobins sa RBCs. Alright, so um, again, ha, malaria identification takes practice. Too. But again, for now, again, at least you already know the defining mga banana crescent shaped hematocytes and band trophozoites, the So, very important that you know, master ng dapat na. Alright, as early as now. Para sa board exam, press the buzzers now. Alright, okay, ayan. And that's the end. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Lord, thank you. I'm surviving with you. But my voice is almost done. <laughs> Alright, sige na lang. Sige na. Alright, so uh, basically that's it for the blood viruses that you can see in our blood smears. Alright, so again, this is just uh, intent, uh, additional lectures na lang because again, most of the parasites here you have already um, covered in your lecture. So review na lang, okay? Alright, and again, I hope, I hope na gets na good. Uh, this is our second to the last and our next and last pre-recorded lecture is the immunoassays for human parasites, alright? So, very sentimental, no? Uh, parasitology is again one of my favorite subjects. And I hope lang that I was able to discuss uh, properly. And that you have something that you have learned and something that you will retain even after our class, even, if, even, our, even after our time together, okay? So, uh, again, that's all. <laughs> I hope na appreciate that you na get mo. And our mnemonics, ha, do not forget, very very helpful if you have other mnemonics on your own 
you may do so but these are some that I shared and I hope it's effective to you then and yeah so I'll see you in the next pre-recorded lecture our last pre-recorded lecture here so <laughs> and um, thank you so much for watching always even if but thank you Jabko for watching and I'll see you on the next pre-recorded lecture thank you so much have a great day and keep safe always